We're now starting to work on module two. We'll load the first script. Let's uh, search for this data set in the catalog. You can search for uh, GSW, Global Surface Water. You can see these are the matches of the data set. We'll work with the mapping layers first, and then we'll come to the other historic data sets. So I'm going to click this one, and let's pop it open into a new tab. So this one is an image. Sentinel tool that we work with was an image collection. This one is just an image that is available in the catalog. This image has this different bands. So you can see there are different bands available for us to uh, select and use. Uh, the description is given here and we can use this. So let's just load this image into Earth Engine. So I'm going to click import and I'm going to rename the variable as GSW. And let's just print it to see what this looks like. So you can see I printed this GSW. It's an image with seven bands. This is global image. And again, each band is the result of some analysis that was done on this entire archive of Landsat equation. Let's see one of the bands, what it looks like. So we'll use the occurrence band and we'll say GSW. How do I select a band? What function would I use? It is the function that is used to select a band. So let's just select and we use occurrence and we'll copy paste it because I always make a mistake in spelling occurrence. So uh, we have this. Let's print it to verify we actually got an image with one band. Okay, so we have one band image now. Let's visualize it. We need this params. If you remember from the presentation, the occurrence shows you how often there was water at this. Uh, place and each pixel has a value between 0 to 100 in percentage. So we'll say min 0, max 100. And we'll give a nice palette. Uh, we'll give a red to blue palette. That means 0 will be red, 100 will be blue, and all the other values will be a color in between that. And let's load this. And now, in zoom into anywhere in the world and you can see this value. So you can see now here we have this image where we have some pixels. If I inspect this, this says there was an 80% occurrence of water at this pixel in the entire history. I can also go to some reservoirs and you can see the kind of changes that happened over time. You can see this reservoir. You can see at the edges, the water is less frequent than at the center, right? So there was more water, always like 98% time there was water here, but at the edges, because again, the, the levels keep changing over time, uh, the water might be only 53% time, right? This allows you to kind of see how the water has changed over the uh, history of this. Thing. And again, this is a global image, so you can see, you can go anywhere in the world and you'll see the history of water at that location. So quite amazing that you have this ready to use data set that you can readily use and do some computation on that. One thing to remember when you are visualizing and looking at this data set is that this is based on Landsat. It's not magic. Whatever Landsat cannot see, this data set cannot see. So if you have small channels of river uh, or canals, 30 meter resolution is not enough to catch that. You might see that I know this, this river always has water, but it says there's no water here because maybe the water is always there during the monsoon season where it's always cloudy and all the landfill observations that you saw were clouded. Right? So clouds are a big problem with this data set, but if there's a valid landfill observation, this data set would pick it up. There's a question on change detection. Yes, uh, can we extract the changes and pick it up? This particular layer is just showing the cumulative results, like how often the water was there. It doesn't have all these individual observations. When we work with the time series data, we can compute month to month or year to year changes. So we can say, show me all the changes that happened between 2010 to 2020, show me all the new water. And you can see that. So we'll come to that. We have an exercise on doing exactly that. All right, let's do the exercise 1C. Rita, you can explain. 